When coding in Python, you will frequently encounter a fork in the road. Depending on the values of certain data, you may want to go in one direction or the other. There may be even more than two directions for you to choose. The if-then-else statements help you navigate these situations. If you want to learn more, then continue watching. Else, watch our next video. To begin, create a file called ifthen.py. In this example, we will collect a string, then test its length to see if it has at least six characters. This is something you may need to do when validating new passwords. The first line uses the raw input function, which will prompt the user to enter a string and then store the value in the variable input. Next, we use the if then command. In the first line, we test to see if the length of the string is less than six characters. If true, the following lines are executed. If not, these lines are skipped. Notice that the if line ends with a colon and the following lines are indented. This is how you identify a code block in Python. This is a big difference from other languages such as Java or C++. In those languages, indentation does not matter, and you group code with braces. In Python, you start a new code block with a colon and group the commands with indentation. You can use any size indentation as long as the commands line up. Now save this file and run the program from a console. I will enter the word ace. Because this word has fewer than six characters, the if statement is true. The length is less than six. So the following code block is executed and the two lines are printed. Run the program again and enter a longer string, like mission. Because mission has more than six characters, the if statement is false. So the following code block is skipped. Let's see another example. Create a new file called ifthen2.py. This time, we will prompt the user to enter a number and we will test it to see if it is even or odd. First, get a number from the user. The raw input function returns a string, so we want to convert it to an integer. We will do this using the int constructor. If the user does not type in an integer, this will cause an error. We will learn how to handle errors in a later video. If the number is a multiple of 2, then print your number is even, else print your number is odd. The percent operator returns the remainder when you divide the first number by the second. In this case, we are computing the remainder when you divide the number by 2. If the remainder is 0, then the number is even, otherwise it is odd. We're ready to test this code. Save the program and open a console. Run the program by typing python if then 2py Enter the odd integer 17. Everything worked. The if then statement correctly identified 17 as odd. Run the program again and enter 50. Correct again. And finally, run the program and type in a word instead of a number. The error message displays the line where our code failed. We entered a word which cannot be converted to an integer. This caused the value error. And since we did not tell Python how to handle this error, it stopped the program. For our final example, we will create an if-then statement that handles more than two cases. Create a new file called ifthen3.py. We will prompt the user to enter the lengths of the sides of a triangle and we will determine if it is scaling, isosceles, or equilateral. A scaling triangle is one where all three sides have different lengths. An isosceles triangle has two sides of the same length. And an equilateral triangle is one where all the sides are equal. First, we prompt the user to enter the lengths of the three sides. Like before, we need to convert the strings to integers. We will do this in one line this time. Next. We compare the sides to determine the type of triangle. If A does not equal B, and B does not equal C, and A does not equal C, then all three sides are different and it's a scalene triangle. If A equals B and B equals C, then all three sides are identical. It's an equilateral triangle. If it is neither scalene nor equilateral, then it must be an isosceles triangle. 
This example illustrates how to handle more than two cases. Once again, if and else lines end in colons. The code blocks that follow are grouped by indentation. What's different is the use of elif, which is short for else if. This allows you to try another test. There is no limit on how many else ifs you can use. And finally, the else statement is a catch-all. If all of the ifs above fail, then this code is executed. Let's test our code. Save this file and open a console. Run the program using the command python if then 3py Enter the sides 3, 4, and 5. Our program is correct. A triangle with these sides is scaling. Run the program again and enter 5, 5, 7. Excellent. A triangle with these sides is definitely isosceles. One more. Run the program and enter 8, 8, 8. Perfect. These are the sides of an equilateral triangle. By the way, we did not test the three numbers to make sure that they make a valid triangle. For example, you could enter negative integers and the program will still run. Here's a problem for you to think about. How do you test three numbers to see if they form a triangle? Ifs, thens, and elses allow you to handle any number of cases in your code. They let you control the flow of your code. If you are serious about programming in Python, then you should master these statements. Or else. <laughs>